you guys for the calculation, I pick certain topics for you directly related to the projects that we do. And we go over sizing them. So to work with me, here's what you need. And you grab your NEC code book, have it handy. What is it? What's, what I hope you guys would do is every time you see a reference in the NEC code book, if you go open the code book to that reference and look at it. So um, I'm hoping I can finish. I gave you guys a handout. So to expedite the process, I typically, uh, I hope you can read my handwriting, but if you can't, let me know. I can read it for you. Sometimes I have a hard time reading my own handwriting. Um, so uh, so expedite the process. I give you a handout so you can follow up st step by step and just fill the information, the missing information here. Um, grab your calculator. I'll show you a couple of tools that you need to do sizing. As electrical engineers, guys, and designers, you will be required to do two things. Do drafting, you guys are working on AppCAD and Revit, and also sizing, your designer. You need to be able to size feeders and services and branch circuit. This example that I drew for you here is major example for sizing feeders and services for a commercial building. So let's go ahead and, um, and maybe we should synchronize ourselves first before we can do that. Otherwise, if you don't do that one, you'll be writing here and the, the letters are coming here. <laughs> you'll see that as we move on. Okay, so um, where am I here? Full screen. So let me show you what you guys, and you have a copy of this, right? Everybody got the copy of this? Let me show you what you have in front of you. <clears throat> this is a commercial load calculation. You guys will be required to do something very similar to this. Uh, let me walk you through what you are looking at. All these blue numbers, we will be sizing them. So um, you guys are designers. So here's, let's start from the top. These feeders, can you guys see that red feeder? The red are the feeders. The, or the, the conductors coming from the utility right at the top into the service panel. This panel, number one, is called the service panel. So it's like a panel like this. The first panel that the conductors from the utility land on, they call them service panel. Well, that number one is my service panel. Inside my service panel, I need, I bring number three, or at least this one that is here, is called service conductors. Number three are called service conductors. And I have them read later on. Service conductors. The conductors coming from the electrical utilities into the service panel. Number two is called service entrance, uh, service um, uh, disconnect means or overconfiguration device, circuit breaker. That little bulb here, right? Always it's a circuit breaker, like these circuit breakers. Okay, so we brought the cables into the panel, we land them on the main circuit breaker, then we took feeders, we took three feeders. One feeder to feed receptacle panel, RP, another feeder to feed lighting panel, a third feeder to feed mechanical panel. And I'm picking these numbers for you. Cool? Three feeders out of the main panel. Am I making sense, guys? I know you have never seen power distribution. That's called power distribution system. Okay. Power distribution system. So, um, and then the green. What's the green? The green either the ground or the neutral. So. Start from the top, number four. Anybody can guess what this number four is? That's the neutral conductor coming from the utility. And, and by the way, they're named down. If you look at your, your sheet that I gave you guys later on, they're named. So I named them down. down, down. Uh, so number four is the neutral coming in to the service panel. You always have to have a neutral. The services that we bring in the US to commercial building, guys, it's a four wire service, they call it. Four wire service. Anybody knows what the first three? Phase A. Is B, is C, the three phases. And what's the fourth wire? A neutral. It's called four wire system. You bring four wires into the building. Three wires are phases, A, B, C, or one, two, three, and the third one is a neutral. Always. That's what we bring to, us, to the building. Okay, now here's the, and the, the neutral is typically sized different than the phases, slightly less. 
And that's why we separate the neutral. Slightly less. And the neutral only carries the unbalanced, like you guys, did you talk about with the, I know you did, but uh, so you, you went to electrical, about three phase, yeah? right? You know how three phase work, right? Three phase, if you don't have, um, if, the, if they're unbalanced, then the neutral carry the unbalanced. For example, if phase A is carrying 10 amps, 10 amps, 10 amps in each phase, the neutral carries zero amps, nothing. If you 10, 5, 3, then the neutral carry the difference between them. Okay, so that's number four. Um, then, and the same thing, we have a neutral going to every panel. Can you guys see that? Then coming into these are the circuit breakers. Number two is a circuit breaker for the circuit breaker for the receptacle, circuit breaker for the winding, circuit breaker for the mechanical panel. Number one is also panel. We need to size the panel. These panels are also number one as well as these panels. Anybody knows what this conductor that goes to the ground rod, what do we call it? Grounding electrode conductor. That's the fancy name for it. And you guys want to learn these. The terminology is so important to understand it. You can't just say the ground conductor. They're defined later on. These are all defined in the, in the document I gave you. It's called grounding electrode conductor. That's the one that goes to the ground rod or the steel of the building. Okay, anybody knows inside the panel here, we bond the neutral to the ground. Anybody knows what this bonding conductor is called? Number five. Main bonding jumper. Number five, can you guys see that's a, a piece of wire or a screw? <laughs> okay, so number five then is a main bonding jumper. We typically, we, when we bring the neutral, uh, <laughs> mean bonding jumper. Number six is grounding electrode conductor. They're defined later on. You'll see them when we go when we size them. So basically, we need to size these six things for this system, guys. That's as uh, as complicated as it gets in any system. The building is an office building. Uh, the voltage system coming to it is 28120, three phase, four wire. This 28120, three phase, four wire is typical voltage that we bring to a commercial building. It's uh, the square foot of this commercial office building is, can you read my handwriting? 50K, 50,000 square foot. So here's a project for you guys. They say here's a 50,000 square foot commercial building. Um, and the voltage is coming to it this way. Here's the equipment that we need. And gentlemen, go size them. Go size all these equipments for you. Now, it can't get more complicated than that, right? So we're going to do step by step how to size these. Based on what? Based on the NEC code book. OK. Any comments, any questions, what we need to do? One more time. We have service number three, service entrance conductor coming from service panel. Then feeders going to three panels. We have the neutral going from and the utility into the service panel, into all the other panels, and we have a ground electrode conductor going to the ground bar, or the ground rod, or the steel of the building, and we have a bonding jumper, typically a screw. The example on the jumper are smaller panels that are a little green screw, if anybody wire. Um, so we need to size that one. The building is an office building, voltage to it, 123 phase four wire, 50 square foot is is the size of that building building any question guys about what's given we need to size four panels six things okay shall we go for next next then also in addition when they tell you guys a building remember it's a 50 what 50 thousand uh, square feet in addition to that you need to know more to size the service for the building. In addition to that, receptacles. A, I, I made these A and Bs. I mean, you know how it got wired over there. A is receptacles. We have 500 receptacles. They're running at 20 amps, and at 20 amps, 120. 500 receptacles. So, Brandon, they told you lay out two receptacles in a commercial building. You start calling receptacles, duplex receptacles, is 500 of them. Right underneath it, this is A and A1. The reason why I call these A and A1 is because they're receptacles, different type of receptacles. 
There's multi outlet multi out assembly. There's multi out assembly like these. Or like these in front of me. Right here. This is called multi out assembly. They decided to use multi out assembly. Sim, this one is called sim simultaneous reuse, meaning used at the same time. I have 60 feet of them. Here you go, measure the one in front of you. 60 feet of that one right in front of you. Okay? Non, can you just read my uh, scratches here? Non sim is non simultaneously. The, there's non simultaneously is 80%, 80, 80 feet of them. So there are two types in that building. The first type is simultaneously used, 60 feet. The non simultaneously used is 80. Who cares? The code treat them differently when we size. That's why we split them. Because the code treat them differently. We're going to see this one in a second. Okay. That's all the receptacles that we have in this building. Any question about the receptacles? Why did I call them A? Because I associated the letter A with the receptacles, just as, a, as an example. Shall we go to the B? Okay, now remember any building, uh, what's in a building? What's, when you get into any building, what's in a building? Receptacles, right? And mechanical equipment. That's what you're going to see. So I'm done with the receptacles. Let's go back to the P's. P's here are all lights, different type of lights. Let's go to P, lighting. Lighting, general lighting. I have 300 fixtures, right? Like the one above your head. Um, Gary, my friend, he when he designed the lighting, he put 300 in that commercial building. Each one of them is running at 1.65 amp, 1 point. I'm giving you the amps and the voltage for each one of these fixtures. So you can calculate it. Right underneath it, we have a show window. The show window, part of it, is 40 feet. Who cares? The code treat the show window differently. Uh, track light. We have a track light, 100 feet of track light. Sign. We have a sign, one sign that says, welcome to whatever commercial building. B4. You just see why I call it these because they're all different type of lights, right? Um, parking lot light, right? Don't you need a parking lot light, gentlemen? Right? Parking lot light. I have six parking lot. Each one of them is running at 400 volt amp, 120. Any question about what you have in this building? Without this information, Brandon, no way on earth you can size anything. Can't you? You just can't size. Does it make sense? What you guys have in this building? Questions about the lighting and the receptacles before we move into the others. Can I bring to your attention? Anybody knows what these numbers are? 1.1, 2, 2.6, 2.4. Can you can you write this as a note? Please. These numbers are related to a load calculation document that you guys are going to be doing for our project. So they are related to the load calculation document that I'm going to be giving you to do for the project. So Jay, my friend, when I give you that document and say, here's what you're going to do load calculation for our project, and say, oh, uh, how is this related to the example that Chad did? Well, you're going to see in that document, number one is actually eight. Here, number 1.1 is A1, 2 is B, 2.6 is that one. So I, I related them to the document. So ignore it now for this example. When next week, guys, I can't remember when we're going to do calc, but when we do calc, you refer to this example. It makes it easier for you. So ignore these numbers on the side, please, for the time being. Okay, let's go to the next thing that we have. Now, it gets even more interesting. Now, we have the receptacles of the lights, Gary. We need heating and cooling. Every single building you walk into, guys, you have to heat and cool, right? At least heat. In Minnesota, heat is a must, right? Um, cool, a lot of respected commercial building. You have to cool it, right? You can't put the people in a 90 degree and expect them to perform. For heating this building, we have three 150 uh, uh, 15 kW, two three pairs. Can you guys see the three pairs here? And we also, that's heating. Chiller, what's the chiller? Chiller is cooling, right? Cooling, we have three chillers running at 82 amps, two eight, three pairs to chill the building. That's our heating, cooling load. Make sense? All the, where do you get, Brandon, where would you get this info? Mechanical engineers. The mechanical engineers guys will tell you, here's what information about how we're going to cool electrical related info and we're going to heat and cool the building. Motors. The second item B, so C is for heating coolers, D is for motors. 
And remember, the rules related to your documentation are there. I have mortar. I have an air handling unit and pumps. The way anybody knows what air handling unit is, air handling unit handles air. You give it cold air, it shoots, it shoots cold air. Hot air shoots hot air. So air handling unit, I have two of them. Uh, 20 horsepower, two air, three phase. You guys remember what you did with uh, with Chase? You did models, right? And size and wanted to supply the water. That's what we're gonna do. Pump, pumps to pump the water for the chillers. I have two pumps running at 10 horsepower, two air, three phase. It gets even more interesting. I do have a kitchen. B is a kitchen equipment. In my kitchen equipment, I have the following equipment. I have so I'll read it for you so you identify it. WH is water heater. Uh, DW, dishwasher, thank you, dishwasher. Range is range. Heat booster, probably dishwasher. So I have a heat booster, a range, a dishwasher, and a water heater. And the loads, can you guys see the loads? 5K, 2K, 10K, 3K, and their number and the voltage if it's three phase or single phase any comments any questions when anybody ever give you guys a load in a commercial building the first thing you need to ask yourself is it what's the voltage is it single phase or three phase it's not enough to say what the voltage is it enough to say what the voltage if i told you i have a load that are running at 10k 208 is this enough information no, is it single phase chad, two hots, or is it three phase, three hots? So when you have a load, you need to ask, what's the uh, what's the KW or the KVA? What is the voltage and what type of phase? Or is it DC? It might be DC too. Any comments, any questions about what's inside? So my friend, I know it's Friday, but you've got your milk today and you're up and running. And you are accounted for, which is good. <laughs> Any comments, guys, about what we have? So we have E number or letters of loads. This is what we typically have in any building. So one more time. Here's my building. The 50,000, and I need to size all these based on the information that you're given. Gentlemen, you are going to be doing the same thing for our commercial building. Exactly the same calculation. So when you get it right now, when I tell you guys do the assignment for commercial, which I will walk you through it again, it will be a breeze. Any comments, any question about what you have in front of you, right? When you guys went with, with, um, with Jeff, he went through motors and some motor calculations. So you should be familiar a little bit with motors, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we are doing refreshment. So, okay. Shall we go ahead and start? So how do you eat an elephant? You're eating, so... One bite at a time. It looks complicated, guys, right? But how do you handle it? Guys, you go one time at a time, and you apply the code to it. So since we put them in this order, where do you think I'm going to start? Hey, let's go. When we're done with A, where do we go? B, and keep going. Yes, sir. Can you put tabs on the That's the best way to do it, if you ask me. I I can't live without tabs. <laughs> okay, gentlemen. Um, as I go, um, I'm going to be flashing my NEC code book, guys, and taking you quick to a couple of other locations. Receptacles. So let's go do the apply the code for the receptacles. Um, the receptacles. I'm going to put them right here. I'm going to go get my NDC code book. Give me a second to grab my NDC code book, please. Um, uh, <laughs> where am I here at? Oh. NDC. <laughs> NDC 2014. <laughs> Okay. All right, gentlemen. Okay.
Okay. Uh, do me a favor. Go to Article 200, 225, please. Uh, actually, Article 220. Article 220. Article 220. Make up your mind, Chair. Article 220. Which page? Okay, Article 220, guys. Can you guys see what it says? Branch circuits, feeders, and services. Everything you need about load calculation. Do you guys have your code book? You don't have the code book yet? Okay. Moving forward, we're going to be living with this document. So, Article 220, we're going to spend a lot of time on Article 220. Okay, so I'm going to be referring to it. I'm going to put it right here. And the way I do it, like exactly like you're looking at here. Um, I'm going to, so, all right. So let's go and, um, and refer to the first thing. All right. So the first thing, um, Article 220. If you guys go to 220.14K, 220.14K, please. 220.14K. If you guys read 220.14K, it will tell you a couple of things. It will tell you a couple of things um, that you have to. So the first thing that we do, guys, uh, um, if blue, if blue is going to be the new stuff that we're going to add. I know there's blue here too, so my confusion here. So the first thing you do when you have a load calculation is you assign for a commercial office building, you assign a one volt amp per square foot. So 220.14K um, should tell you at one time that this is what you guys can do at 220.14K. Um, k Okay, where am I here? That 14K. Uh, it's in 2014. Uh, I K. Where am I? There you go. Can you guys see that? Everybody can see K here. It says banks and office building, one volt amp per square foot. Can you guys see that right in here? Okay, that's what we're doing. You guys see that? Uh, that's yes, but that's not for receptacle though. For receptacles on lights, we're coming to that. Highlight that one. Very important. Okay. So gentlemen, we got that. Let's go to uh, back to, so this is where the one volt amp comes. So you take one volt amp, what's the square foot of the building? 50? 50K. When you multiply one by 50, guys, if you forget your math, what do you get? 50K, K what? Kilovolt amp, volt amp. We size everything that depends on volt amp. So it's so KVA. It's so important, guys, to use the word KVA, not KW. KVA. Any question where does the one came? Not from my basement, from the NDC code book. <laughs> Everything, guys, we do is based on the NDC code book. Cool? Brandon, makes sense? All right. Let's go to 220.14i. Highlight 220.14i. You guys, wherever I go, I don't want to flip to it. You guys are there. 220.14i. Actual. 220.14i, it tells you the actual. Can you guys see that? So for receptacles, you have to do two calculations. One, one volt per, one volt per square foot. The second one is the actual. Okay, anybody can tell me how many receptacles Brandon decided to throw in this building? 500. 500, thank you. Where did the 500 come from? Brandon decided to throw 500. Remember, guys, given, right? Number of receptacles. Then the sequence book does allocate 180 volt amp for every receptacle. Can you guys read that? Please read and verify. Under 220.14i, that it says highlight the 180, right? It says, if you guys go there, 180. So it's allocated 180 volt amp. I, I might, you know what, I, it would be nice if I actually put one volt amp multiplied by this and. Uh, so it makes it clear. There's 500 receptacles multiplied by, what did you say, 180 volt amp. Okay, so if you do the math, and I did the math here so to explain the process a little bit, guys, you're going to end up with 90 kVA. 90 kVA. And do me a favor, whenever you get the answer, I always box it in. Please box them in. 
Anybody want to challenge where the 100, 180 came from? You guys are looking at it, right? Right there. Okay, shall we move to A3? That's it. That's it for the receptacles. Let's go to the, uh, go to 20.14H, please. Go to 20.14H, just there. Yes. Give me one second. Uh, the largest. You pick the largest of the two. In a second, though. We're doing that right here. In this step. Just give me one second. Okay. Um, go to 220.14H, please. 220.14H. This is multi outlet assembly. If you guys read it, multi outlet assembly, it will tell you. Anybody remember? Simultaneous, non simultaneous. Please read it, right? Here's what it tells you. For simultaneously used, you have to take 60, 180 volts for every square foot. Every, not square foot, but linear foot. 180. So how many square feet for simultaneously we have? You guys remember? From the, the document that I gave you, for simultaneously used, it was 60. 60 feet. <laughs> Divide them by 1 and multiply them by 180 volts M. Equal, and I'll tell you why I did it this way. Equal um, 10.8 kVA and circle. Okay. If it's simultaneously used, J, meaning it's used a lot, all of them are used at the same time. So they allocate for every foot, for every foot, they allocate 180 volt amp. How do you do the math? You take the number of feet, divide them by one, and multiply by 180. Right? You guys know how to to do the uh, proportional. So, when, uh, John, does it say that in that? You see where it says that? It should say uh, for under H, yeah? Yes, sir. Do you want all the labels that KVA? Everything is KVA, yes. Uh, we no longer deal with all that. <laughs> Everything is KVA. Do you guys know how we, we divide, the, 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 how we come up with KVA? We divide by 1,000, right? I assume you know the difference between V, you know, so this number here, when you're done, you divide it by a thousand to get KVA. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, they are simultaneously used. Now let's go to the non-simultaneously used. The non-simultaneously used guys, how many of them do I have? Uh, the non-simultaneously used gentlemen, I have 80 of them. 80 feet. Divide by five, multiplied by 180 volt amp, equal, and I will show you what I did in a second, equal 2.9 kVA. Okay, if they are non simultaneously used, meaning they will not be used at the same time, for every five feet, not one foot, you, you for every five feet, you allocate 180 volt amp for this multi out assembly. How do you do the math? You take your non-simultaneously used, divide it by 5, and then multiply it by what? 180. Does it say that, guys, in the code? It should say the non-simultaneously, 180 volt for every 5 feet, the simultaneously, 180 volt for 1 foot. <coughs> Highlight this one, please. Have your H, yeah, highlight it. So you don't think that Chad brought this info from his basement. <laughs> Okay. Cool. Then step number three, right at the bottom here, what does it say? You add A2 and A3. Where's A2? Where's A2 and A3? So we're going to add the 90, 90 KVA plus 10.8 KVA plus 2.9 kVA. I added all these equal. Uh, these equal. Um, I have 108. One. I'll say 103.7 kVA. 
103.7 kVA. And who decides the user or you as an engineer if you don't know here's a question if you don't know what would you do yes what's the worst scenario it's called cover your butt type design yeah if you don't know if they're simultaneous news or not not simultaneous they are simultaneous if you if you don't know assume simultaneously worst scenario Good point. <laughs> Well, they typically here in the, the air commercial, this is, remember, it's not a house. This is a commercial oh, building. Okay. So if it's an office yeah. and you have this multi assembly in front of you and you have three, four people using using them, that's simultaneously used. I mean, if you have, uh, if you can fit six people in this multi assembly, right, and you have, say, five of them using it, that's simultaneous. If you have one person using it or two, that's not simultaneously used. How do you know? You might not. So what's your, what do you do? Simultaneously. Yeah. Okay, we added that. We added the two steps together. And the reason why we added them, guys, you're going to see, because we're going to apply a demand factor. There's a demand factor. I added these, and please, on, on the test, guys, here's, let me tell you about my test. Things get... And when we get to the test, things get, there's a lot of steps. Write yourself the steps that you need, bring it to the test. I don't expect you guys to memorize all these steps. You can't, you know. Uh, not notes, but write yourself steps. Yes, absolutely. Write yourself steps to do this, all these steps. I don't want to see the example in front of you. Other than that, write yourself any notes that you need to solve the problem in the test. Because I can tell you, moving forward from here until you graduate, you're going to have a lot of calculation. Without these steps, you're going to get lost. I get lost with all of them. I have them next to me and I use them. Okay, cool. So calm down. You're going to have your steps with you on the test, Steven. Yes, sir. A hundred percent. Yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Otherwise, you... I mean, it gets... I feel sorry for the master and the journalists when they teach them because they have to memorize all this stuff. And... But they don't do it as detailed as we do it. They really don't. I teach it. They don't go in that detail. Okay. So next step. If you guys go to next step, which is a receptacle. Can you guys go to table 220.44, please? Go to table 220.44. Table 220.44. If you guys go to table 220.44, right here. Uh, do me a favor. If your table... You, you have a mistake in your code book, you should ask for a refund. <laughs> I'm not kidding you, that's a mistake. I want you to highlight this word. Oops. Okay. I want you to highlight. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. uh, 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 edit. How am I going to get my edit here? Okay, anyway, there you go. Right here. Can you guys see the non? Yep. Right, non dwelling, will you? You said willing, doesn't it? Yes, that's a mistake in the code. <laughs> Call for refund. If you have a, an earlier version, there are, did I tell you there's a hundred mistakes in that book that you have? Yeah, I mean early version, early copy of the 2014. <laughs> huh? Well, they send, no, the errata. They have on their website. I'll, I'll, copy, I'll give it to you guys if you want to. Um, as we move on, maybe next week, I'll give you all these documents and you go there and highlight the ones. But as I go forward, the ones that are related, some of the stuff is not related to you guys now, but so you don't care. But the ones related to you. So change this one to not willing, please, on your code book, because that's in the way that mine, the electronic version, by the way, you can buy electronic version of this, it's licensed to you like mine. And the nice thing about the electronic version, every time they have a mistake, you go download it, psh, correct it for you. So, all right. Okay, demand factor for non dwelling receptacle. The first 10,000, leave them alone. More than 10,000, what do you do? Cut it by 50. You guys know how to use these tables? The first 10 sacred cow, leave them. Anything higher than 10, chop them by half. That's what this table tells you, right? Okay, so let's go apply it. Put it down here and go apply it. So, all right, so. Remember that, that the, our number was, you guys remember our number was 103.7 one, oh, 
uh, A, V, A, right? I want to apply the rule for it. So the first thing K, what do you do with them? K, V, A. <laughs> Shall not be touched, leave them alone. The first thing K. Okay? Then after that, um, I don't know, how am I going to do that? There you go. The first thing K. So then, you take 103.7 minus 10K. All these are K. And then you cut them by what? 0 0.5. 0 0.5. And then add them up. Add it to up. One more time. And when we do the math, the first thing K, don't touch them. Then anything higher than 10 K, how do you do the math? Anything higher than 10 K? You take the number, subtract 10 from it, right? And then multiply it by 0 0.5. And then add them up. When you do that, gentlemen, you will end up with 56.9 KVA. 56.9 KVA. One more time. The first 10, what do we do with them? Don't touch them. Higher than 10, how do you make it higher than 10? You take that your number that you come up with, subtract 10 from it, whatever that number comes, and, and multiply it by 0.5. That's what 50% of it. Uh, no, that what, what, did, what did you guys come up with? So 103.7 minus 10 yeah. Yeah. times 0.5 plus, plus 10. You're going to add the 10 to it. Gentlemen, you have to add the 10 back. Yeah. So they just left it up to the No. I, I did trick you. So should we do this map in a different way? And so you subtract it, the final answer, you add 10 back to it. Yes. We don't subtract it. You take them, you subtract them, and leave them alone. They don't want you to do it. Here's the oh, here's idea. Again, that part of the calculation do not want you to touch it. Does that make sense? The 10K here, the, I know, see, this is how the code works, guys. They take a certain amount and they say, Regardless of what you do, they don't want you to go lower than this for safety. Anything higher, cut it, right? But then at the end, don't forget the one that you left here. So add them at the end. Am I making sense? One more time. Yes, sir. If you, what you prefer to round to the... Uh, to the first digit. Uh, decimal digit, yeah. That's more than what you need. So take it off when you put it back up. Absolutely. After you apply the 0.5. You're going to see a lot of monkeying in the code like this. you got to get used to it, guys. you got to get used to it, okay? you got to get used to it. So the first 10, leave them alone. Anything higher than 10, cut them by 5. Do not, do not forget to add them at the end. So you add whatever. What was the answer here? Can you give me the answer here? 46. 46.9. So 46.9, and then you add a 10 to it, it becomes 56.9. Uh, okay? Yeah, I put the whole answer together. I hear you. Good job when you clarify. Forty, six, forty-nine. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, that's what I can't go further. Okay. That's for the people in India. <laughs> okay. Choose the then when you're done here, here's what you asked me that question later on. Then remember that one volt amp per square foot for the apartment for the building? And you said, well, then, which one are we going to choose, Chad? After you apply the demand, choose largest demand of NEC. Largest demand or NEC? The largest, so you came up with 50, after you applied the demand, you came up with 56.9. What was the, the from the get go? 50. 50. So you're going to choose the largest of 50 or 56.9. Which one do you guys think? Okay, good. <laughs> it's 
right, and sometimes I have to remind myself. <laughs> so this largest of, write yourself, 50 kVA, and everybody knows that or um, 56, 56.9 kVA. So we give the largest of these two. The largest of these two. So obviously the largest of these two is 50, right? 56.9 kVA. Right? Now, highlight it and do me a favor, write start next to it. Like this. Why did I have to put the stars next to it? Gary, my friend, this number is your complete final number for this step. Done for the receptacles. You no longer need to do anything for the receptacles. Am I making sense? My receptacles, now do I have to worry, when I pick up the load for the receptacle, do I have to worry about anything else? These are the, the two stars that I put. The ones that have two stars next to it. Now we're done with the receptacles. Does it make sense? I'm taking my time, guys, with you, going to the step by step. That's all. The receptacle panel, as well as the main panel. So the main panel, guys, is going to see the receptacle load, right? As well as the receptacle panel, right? So when the load goes to the receptacle panel, it has to go through the main. So this this chunk, John, of load will be the load allocated for the receptacles in two panels. The main panel, as well as the receptacle panel. Now, would this chunk of load be seen by the lighting panel? No. Would it be seen by the receptacle panel? Yes. Would it be seen by the main panel? Yes. Everything will be seen by the main panel. Main panel sees everything. Okay? Yes, sir. Demand is this guy. Here. This will get it from the table. Remember how we applied the shooting? Uh, choose largest of demand. Maybe I should say actual. Maybe I should say actual demand. Demand or demand actual. Um, demand. Demand actual or NBC. <laughs> Yeah, 220.14 uh, K will tell you choose the largest. Okay. I want to I want to flip guys to lighting. Do we need a break? Quick break, or shall we move on? Everybody's good. Keep going. Wow. What type of drink have you guys gotten this morning? Choose the largest. Why the largest? Because what's the worst scenario? Safety. Got it. Okay, I offered to give you guys five minutes, but everybody thinks it's good to keep going. We'll go another half an hour and we'll give you a break. Okay. Move to the lights. Receptacles are done. Thumbs up for receptacles. Cool. All right. Let's go to lights. For lights, do me a favor. Go to table 220.12 from the get go. And you see code book 220.12. Let's go to table 220.12. Right in here. 220.12. That's where you were just talking about, my friend. 220.12. If you have never seen this table, please highlight this table. Um, right in here. Highlight it. Can you see that? 220.12. Okay. Uh, this is where you can find the allocated lighting load based on NEC code book. All right, so if you guys look at this table, uh, we're looking at an office building, gentlemen, right? Aren't we looking at an office building? Why did I highlight the restaurant? Do you think I'm, I'm off here? No, I can't. Okay, office building. I highlight, can you guys? My highlighter is not catching up with me. All right, highlight the office. I'm, I'm trying to highlight the office here. Can you guys see under the office, what does it say here? Yep, under, no. This one here. Oh, three and a half. B. Three and a half. Yeah, B is just a, a note underneath it. Three and a half volt amp. And this is volt amp, right? Can you see the volt amp? Turn one. 
Do me a favor, don't go to Termita, whether it's 48 years. This column is what? If you're working in Europe or anywhere they use metric, this is our column. You would think, why would, I mean, 90% of us use this column. Why don't you put this column in the front? But they're trying to be international and mm. appeal to the international. And the rest of us who use it 90% of the time, they have to go to the second. If it's metric, it should be in the second one because for most of us who use the code, right? It's just, anyway. Everybody knows what three and a half came. Cool? So the NEC code book has allocate a bolt amp for lighting. Can I, can you guys see the word lighting here? Not receptacle. Receptacle, we're done with receptacle. Lighting. Lighting. So for lights only, no receptacle here. Okay, then, so everybody knows how we use this table for lighting. Later on, since we're here, for the dwelling, somebody said about dwelling, right? For dwelling, because you guys are doing dwelling. Can you highlight dwelling for me because we're doing dwelling too? And what does it give you for dwelling, please? Why do I need to do this one? Three. Highlight dwelling because we're doing dwelling too. Can you guys see the other occupancies that you can pick from this table, right? Hospitals and what's not. All right, so we got this table. Let's go to the second, the other table that you guys need to know. Um, did you guys get, okay? Cool. The second table I would like you to highlight is table 220 and 44, please. Demand factor for life. Uh, 220.42. Must highlight that one. Okay. And by the way, we're going to be using them this semester, this semester, next semester. You know it now, you're good to go. And you're going to be using it at work, so it's uh, get used to it. Okay, I would like you guys to highlight the following. Now, after, it's called demand, lighting demand load factor. Everybody, do you guys know what a demand is? A demand is, when you have multiple loads connected to the system, because of the diversity of the load and the human being behavior, the lights cannot be, not everybody uses the same equipment at the same time. They allow you to kind of reduce the load a little bit because yes, if you add them all up, we'll come up with this number. But when, in real life, when things are energized, people don't energize everything at the same time. So they allow you to cut it down to a smaller acceptable number based on industry standards and observation and research. That's what these demand factor are, okay? So meaning after you do a lighting load, Come over here, check. Do you need to cut it down because of people don't turn the light on at the same time? Let's check. Okay. Dwelling. If you're doing dwelling, look at the dwelling. You have to apply this. Uh, I will walk you guys through this dwelling later on. That's your demand factor for dwelling. Are we doing dwelling in this? We're not doing dwelling yet in this example. Is it dwelling? Is it a house? No, it's not a house. Okay. Hospital. Are we doing a hospital, gentlemen? Okay, hotel, motel. Are we doing hotel, motels? No. Are we doing warehouses? No. What are we doing? Office, commercial building. All others, you see where all others are? What the directing factor is? Don't touch them. Did you see what 100% means? Don't touch them. Leave them alone. That's what 100% means. So in an office building, guys, the light can turn on and stays on. People turn them on for the most part and then you run. In my house, you know, we turn them on and off and all the time, but you walk into an office, for the most part, light goes on, stays on for three hours or more, right? So that's why, do they want, after you do your math, do they want you to cut it down, reduce it? Don't reduce it. So you come to this table and check if you need to reduce. If your occupancy is here, you reduce it. If not, it becomes part of others. And what do you do? Leave it alone. Am I the only one who's excited on Friday morning? <laughs> <laughs> okay, does it make sense though? Yeah. All right, let's go apply it. So let's put it here and go back to this table. And now that you guys are expert in these two tables that you highlighted them, let's go apply it. Okay, let's apply lighting. 220.12, from 220.12 you guys, okay. Uh, NEC, from the NEC, that is the audio three, right guys, 3.5 volt amp multiplied by the square foot of the building is what? 50K. <coughs> um, now, lighting, here's the deal, lighting is continuous load. And because it's continuous load, 
you have to multiply it by 1.25. Can you guys write your seven node? Because it's continuous node, if it's a continuous node, you multiply by, but meaning it will sit this light. Look at this light. It has been on for at least three hours. Three hours or more, the code considered the load continuous load. If you go to the definition of continuous load in Article 100, the will tell you continuous load is the load that sits there on for three or more hours. Okay, light obviously in a commercial building is continuous load. It sits for three hours. Okay, because of this, you multiply this by 1.25. Why 25% increase in it? Because it's, can I hear the word continuous load? Continuous Say, load. Thank you. <laughs> continuous load. What's continuous load? If you do the math here, you get your 21, uh, 9, K, V, and A. Okay. Where is that? Do this? Yeah. What did what did you come up with? Twenty something? Yeah, round up. I'm not too hung up. Guys, in, in, in this calculation, even rounding up to the one K is okay. All right. One point two five for continuous load. Uh, well, it says, yes, continuous load is defined in article 100. If you go to continuous load, it tells you any load that runs fully for three hours or more. Okay? So just, now you're going to ask yourself, every time you have a load, is it continuous? Up it 25%. If you don't know, um, then you assume it's continuous, the worst scenario. 125, 25%, which is 1.25. Up it. Okay, so that's that one. Let's go to, this is what the antique book tell you. Before Brandon start laying out his fixtures in the building, right, this is the number that you should be using to size. But now Brandon went and laid out all his fixtures, right? They, they call it the actual. Now we have the actual because we design it. Let's go check. You need to go check if the actual is larger than the code, guys. Guess what? You have to use the actual. So you choose the largest of the two. So let's go look at, check the actual. Okay, Brandon, do you remember how many fixtures you put in this? No, about 300. Yeah, you designed it and you forgot already. <laughs> <laughs> under, under lighting fixtures? 300. Everybody knows where the 300 came from? No. Lighting fixtures, 300. Okay, lighting. what was the amp on these babies? The amp, <laughs> 1.65. Multiply by the voltage, 120. Anybody knows what am I doing here? When you multiply the amp by the voltage, what do you get? The volt amp. You guys did the Ohm's law. I hope you remember it, <laughs> right? Ohm's law. You got the volt amp for the fixture, okay? And then, uh, anybody knows why I'm multiplying by 1.25? Yeah. Okay. Your actual. Okay. I when you guys do a load calculation, you're engineers. You always work with case. We don't size the transformer. If you say it's twenty thousand volt amp transformer, people look at you like, "Are you kidding me? Which school did you go to?" You know? <laughs> 20k yeah. we're power we don't the, the people who size uh, volt amps are 500 volt amp transformer these are uh, you know the electronic guys and the low voltage guys and you know i have a, a 1000 volt amp control transformer yeah you know, we don't deal with that we deal with a k okay is it wrong to say it? it's not wrong but it's not the language they use Okay, 74. Now, do, do me a favor. Do we have to apply lighting demand load to 20.42 on this number? Do we have to uh, apply the demand? Remember that the demand was what? 100%. So, no. If it was a, here's a deal. If that was a house, what would you do with this number here? If it was a house? You have to go apply the demand factor on that, which we will do. Okay? But in this case, do I have to worry about the lighting demand factor? It's 100%. And then, 
the last step there is choose the largest of the largest of actual actual did I spell it right? Actual yeah. yes, good. Good Friday. Actual and and EC. So the largest of basically these two numbers, gentlemen. 74, 74, K, B, A, and what's the other number? And uh, 219, K, B, A. And I think if you do your imagination, it comes 219, K, C, A. And you circle it. And what do you put? How many stars do you put here? At least four. At least four stars. Or are we going to add them up? I think I'm going to add them up later on. Yeah, I'm going to add all the lights. That's why I didn't want to. Don't put stars yet, because we're going to add them to the other lights. We have other lights. Yeah. We have other light loads. We're going to add to them, and then we, we put the whole lump sum together. Okay, so this is the total for the general lighting load. This is called general lighting load. Why general? Because the one that right above your head, that's called general. You guys have still, anybody wants any more crackers here? <laughs> Test these animal crackers. So I use I used to get them when I was in the in the kindergarten for, for behavior. <laughs> Good behavior. I, I used to go always for a donkey or a lion or <laughs> Oh I did that too. And then the legs then the legs and then you go to the body. Yeah. Typical. Not typical. Typical kids. Are they? Oh, yeah. Yeah, those are like Okay, gentlemen. <laughs> now, remember, the first lighting that we did is general lighting. That's for the whole building. Now, let's go to specific lighting. In lighting, guys, is a science. So they do general, this is, you're looking at general lighting right above your head. Now, we need specific lighting for certain application. One of them is a show window. Why would you use a show window? Show off things, right? Um, track light, same thing. You show certain things, highlight certain things. How about signs? So you tell them what type of building is there. How about parking lot? So for you and I can see where we can park at night. Are these general lights? No, they're special lights. You still have to accommodate for them, but they're still light. That's why they're under B. Can you guys see B is light? So they are B, uh, what is it, B1, 2, 3, and 4. All right, show window. Go to 420.43a, please. Okay, if you guys go there, it tells you for show window. Can you guys go there and, and look at it? 420.43a. It will tell you for a show window, you have to allocate 200 volt amp for every, yes sir, foot. This is back to try to say it. Yep. Uh, welcome with our receptacle. We didn't do 20 times 120 to get the whole thing to the receptacle. Because, uh, the, times for the yeah, for the receptacles that we were given from the NEC yeah. could get yeah. the volt amp. Okay. Yeah, for lights, we're not given the yeah, we're given the amps. Yeah. Yeah, so you need to find the whole time. Good point. All right, for show windows, if you guys read 220.43, Jay, can you agree with me that says a 200 volt amp for every one foot? If you guys read through it, right? Yeah. Okay, so how many feet do I have? Do you guys remember that I have 40 feet multiplied by what? By 200 volt amp from the NEC foot book, and since it's light, light, Gary, is assumed what in a commercial building? Remember the continuous? Thank you. I'm going to be harassing you with continuous all year. 1.25. And then what do you guys, this is what you get. 10 kVA. Okay. So where did the 200 came from, John? You saw that one, right? From the article. You get, did you guys verify and highlight it? Always. <laughs> yeah. It says 200 volt amp per square foot. But not square foot. Linear foot. It says linear foot if you read through it. Huh? Linear? Linear is you measure just linear. Yeah, like. Like here, here's a force linear. Another force linear. Smaller force linear. 
Okay, linear point. Um, what other word you can describe to, to indicate linear? Straight? <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely. Continue with Absolutely. Absolutely. You got it. You got it. And sign. Yeah. yeah. Do you turn the sign off every three hours? You got it. You guys got it. Yes, sir. Well, but remember, you take, yeah, yeah, you take the worst scenario. The worst scenario is if the lighting parking is like uh, in the winter in Minnesota, people work until five o'clock, the parking lot will be on and the building light will be on. That's your worst scenario, right? Okay, so that's it. Let's go, go to 220. That's 43B, please. Do 20, that's 43B. 43B. Track lights. The track lights. Can you guys, can somebody verify the track lights for me? If you guys read the track lights, it says 100 feet for how many, uh, it says um, 150 volt for how many linear feet? Linear feet. How many linear feet? Two. Everybody got that? So if for every two feet, linear feet, you allocate 150 volt amp. Now, where did they get these numbers? experience guys there's a bunch of smart people sitting at code nationwide and they come up with these values based on experience and industry standards so how many feet um, uh 100 yep thank you 100 feet uh, okay so here's how we do the math you divide the 100 by 2 why did they divide it by 2 gentlemen 32. yes and you multiply them by 150 and you multiply them by 1.25 why 1.25 are you guys annoyed so far? <laughs> Nine is the I like that one. That's your track light. Did you guys get that? For every two feet to allocate 150. Jay, on the test, all these notes will be with you. Uh, otherwise, I, I can't I can't see how you can do things like this. All your notes with you guys. So calm down, get it, sink it in. Use it for the test and your work. Um, so, all right, let's go to the sign. For the sign, do me a favor, go to 220.14f. 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 Okay, what does 220.14f tell you? As for every building, assign, uh, allocate the sign, and the sign is 1200 volt amp. Did you guys 220.14f? Did you read it? If you read it, it says a 1200 volt amp for one sign for every commercial building, right? <coughs> Everybody verify the 1200 volt amp? Okay, then you take one sign. How many signs do we have? One sign multiplied by 120, the 1200 volt amp multiplied by 1.25 equals um, 1.5 kVA. Um, I um, can I can I bring to your attention at 600.5? These are articles 600.5. If you guys go there, this is not important to go there, but if you go there, it tells you every every building, commercial building, must have at least one sign. That's all. No calculation. 600.5. If you guys go there, it tells you a commercial building have to have at least one sign. Now. If it has three signs, what do you do? What would this number be? That's it. But at least one sign. Okay. Gentlemen, that's all. Is there anything else related to the light? Remember, we're in the light, special and general. We did the general. These are the special lights. So parking lot. We're still parking lot. For my parking lot lights, for my park, how many fixtures do I have for my parking lot lights? Six of them. And what's the whole panel for each one of them? 400. Uh, volt amp, I know, my handwriting is. Uh, and multiply this by 1.25, and that will give you 3 kVA. What's the reference for this one? Actual light. There's nothing. The sequence book doesn't tell you how to calculate the, the light for the parking lot. 
So they really they go back based on the actual light. Actual lights. So probably. Actual. Sorry, guys, for that. Um, actual, no. Multiply by uh, actual light. I'm trying to get you a yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, actually, I do have one for you. A reference that could cover uh, 220.14a. This book here, 220. Can you guys go to 220.14a? And the second paragraph, read the second paragraph, 220.14a. Um, uh, it says the outlets for specific appliances or other loads not covered in 220.14b2l shall be calculated based on the amp rating of the appliances or load served, right? not covered so if it's not covered based on our amps we have the amps in this in, in this case we have the whole amps mm -hmm. so that will be your reference 220.14a so okay now what do you guys think we're going to do add them up. up so let's go add them up gentlemen okay, I, I want to take uh, 219k, that's a general, plus 10k, that's B1, plus 9k, B2, plus 1.5k, B3, this is B2 plus here, plus uh, 3k, and gentlemen, when you add them up, you're going to end up with uh, 242.5k, B, A, this is where you're going to highlight, and this is where you're going to start it. Please start it because it's, you're going to see what I'm going to do with it later on. You use this number, Gary, to size two things. Anybody remember? Can help, Gary? What are the two things that use this number to size? The lighting panel. Lighting panel and the main panel. Thank you. Is it, is it point nine? Two one nine ten nine one point five plus three k. Did I make a mistake? Okay, two four point two. It's within one k, guys. It wouldn't make a difference. Plus or minus one k wouldn't make a difference in a power industry. So. So one is nine point three. Nine point three. Yeah, nine. Yes. Well, I would, for the test, guys, just carry one decimal. 9.3, that's all. One decimal. So if your load is 9.35, make it 9.4. If your load is 9.34, make it 9.3. You got it? The receptacle. Yes. So far. So far. Yes. You guys need a quick break? <laughs> Before we move into the other equipment, we might have to be here until five o'clock tonight. <laughs> All right, let's take a quick yeah, break here. <laughs> let's um, can we switch, guys? Sorry to interrupt your flow of energy.
will, will direct it. <laughs> that continue was slowed. Okay, let's go to heating and cooling. Um, let me highlight that one. Go back into heating and cooling. Do me a favor. Go to 220.51, will ya? 220.51. Yeah, 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 yeah. For heating, it, right? We did the uh, we did lighting. Let's go to heating and cooling. You can see we're going just one step, one load at a time, right? For heating, gentlemen, please, when I say go there, please go there. Just look at it because you've never seen that. 220.51. If you guys go there, it will tell you 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 basically going to use uh, nameplate value for all these heating equipment, right? 220.50. 51, no rating, no value. So remember, I had uh, three heaters. Each one of them is rated for 15 kVA. By the way, in Minnesota, and in a lot of other states, guys, they use natural gas as heating element. So most of the time, the heat, the cooling is, I would say 90% of the time, the cooling is larger than the heating. You know, and the heating is really nothing, not no load, because we don't burn electricity to heat to heat the homes. A lot of people, a lot of commercial buildings. Okay. 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 Uh, in heating, heating guys, uh, remember remember the power factor. Yeah. A resistive load, the power factor is the same for for KW and KV. Heat. It is resistive load. So KW is equal to KV if it's heat because it's resistive load. So, um, and that will be 45 KVA pound. Face value. 220. Everybody got that one, guys, gentlemen? 220. So we got that one to one to fifty one. Fix electric heating at a hundred percent. We can at a hundred percent. You guys saw it says fix at a hundred percent. Okay, let's go to cool. Chillers. For chillers. Um, the code for chillers is two twenty dot fifty. If you guys go to two twenty dot fifty, please, it says for motors shall be calculated in according to two. 430.24, 25, 26, and 440.6. To give you a list of articles, right? If you guys go to 250.54, it gives you a list of articles, okay? So if we, uh, chillers, let's talk how many chillers do we have? Three. We have three chillers, okay? And, um, Uh, 220.50 and 440.6 and 440.6 is another for chillers. It tells you basically we're going to go to these nameplate values for these. Um, Okay. So we we have three of them, guys, and each one of them is um, you, we need to calculate, right? So we have to multiply by each one of them is 82 amps times uh, two a times 1.73. Um, okay. That's it's 1.73 for the third one. Uh, three phase. How do you find the volt amp for three phase? Remember, you guys remember that? For single phase, amp times voltage. For three phase, amp times voltage times 1.73 because the three voltages. Everybody understand where the 1.73 comes from? For three phase. And gentlemen, this maybe will get you 89 kVA. 89 kVA. Okay. The 
have three columns because we have three children. Right? The number of children. Everybody understand how to do the math of why the whole camp? <laughs> the worst thing that could, you could happen to you if you add an amp to whole camp. Can't add the amp to whole camp. Amp is amp and whole camp is whole camp. Everything is size based on whole camps. Okay, then go to 220.60, please. Go to 220.60. If you go to 220.60, gentlemen, and anybody can tell me what it says? Non coincidental load. It says, hey, if you have two loads that shall not be running simultaneously, non coincidental, then you can choose the largest. A major example of this, guys, is heat and cool. Do you heat and cool the building? General heat and general cool the building at the same time? Unless you're crazy. You know what I mean? Now, there's special cooling, guys, that they use all the time, which is uh, data center cooling. That's a whole different area. That's special cooling system for data center. General cooling and general heating for the building is either you heat the building or you cool the building. And if you heat, and sometimes they do heat exchange, and in the winter they do some cool or whatever, but that's not fully. When you fully heat the building or fully cool the building, either you fully heat it or fully cool it. Okay. So because of this, you're going to choose the largest of the two. So drop the lowest, basically. Okay, choose the largest. Oh, the, I should choose the larger. When, when it's two, we do the larger, right? When it's, uh, when it's more than two, we choose the largest. I should, I should re remember my English. I should join you guys for one of these conversations. Uh, choose the larger of heat or cool. Um, okay, so let's go find that larger of heat and cool. So the larger of heat, guys, and cool right in front of you. It's uh, 89, right? So we're going to use uh, 45, 88, um, comma, uh, 89, KBA. Choose the larger of the two. So obviously it's 89, KBA. And you square it or rectangle it. And make sure you put Y in lower than it. So this is what we're going to carry for heating and cooling the building. Okay, anybody can guess where this number is going to go? Oh, okay, there, there are four panels. There's a receptacle, lighting, mechanical, and main. Mechanical and main. Thank you. You guys understand why? Because this mechanical load going mechanical panel, special panel, and the main sees everything. The main will see everything. That's it. Shall we flip to the motors? Everybody's good? That's easy, huh? Let's go to the motors. D, motors. Okay, for motors, for motors, guys, go to 250, 220.50, same thing. It will tell you to go to Article 430. For Article 430, I would like you guys to do the following. Yes, uh, let's go. Where did my code? Did you guys steal my code book? Okay. <laughs> okay, where, is, where am I here? Uh, go to 430, please. 430, come on, Chad. I'm going to go, typically I go from the back, easier here. All right, here you go. Go to the following table. If you have not used it, let's look at it right here. Uh, which page is that? Page 351. 351, please. Full load curve. Full load curve. Okay, very important. So, let's just highlight this table and let's talk about using it. This is called... For motors, guys, we use the full load current from the NEC when we size, okay? This is, says three-phase motor, right? So if you are in a single phase, which you can just touch this one, there's one before it for single phase. Can you guys see the single phase ones? They're all there in DC and whatnot. They're all the same. So for single phase, there's one for single phase, which is right before it, I thought. Do you guys see that? Here's my single phase one. Please highlight my single phase one. Um, Two-phase, everybody knows what the two-phase is. They don't use them anymore. They used to have two-phase system, not commonly used. So if, you, if your motor is single-phase, you go to, um, uh, to this guy here. If it's two-phase, you go to this table. They're all the same. If your motor is three-phase, you're going to go to this table. And if I think before that is DC, isn't it? If your motor is a DC motor, guys, can you guys see that? You're going to go to this table. So the type of motor, you guys did motors, right? You did DC motors, AC, single phase and three phase. You didn't do two phase because we don't use them anymore. Okay. There's one building I think has two phase. All right. So um, let's go. What was the horsepower of that boy? 
20 horsepower. Okay, here's my 20 horsepower. I hope I can carry it. Oh, <laughs> I started running with 20. Here's the 20. Okay, now I want to bring your attention that what was the voltage? 28. When it's 28, you go to the closest, the 28 is easy because it's right here. You go to, I want to highlight this one there for you because these are ranges of voltages. If you look at this, there's ranges of voltages, guys. So if your voltage between 440 to, two, uh, to 480, you go to the closest. <coughs> go to the closest voltage. The reason why they have the voltages rated for lower and motors is because of voltage drop. So the system will be 28, and the motor will be rated for typically 200 or, 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 or 28 or whatever. Well, slightly lower voltages, so you can lose some voltage drop, but you still motor, your motor is still functioning good. Okay. 2828, okay, what's the follow-down follow for that board? 19 And I assume you guys have seen this table before. Okay. All right, so I want to remind you, gentlemen, this is an induction motor, and it's 4K. Now, do me a favor. If your motor was synchronous motor, where would you go? You guys haven't done synchronous motor with us, right? But there are something called synchronous motor. So pay attention to how synchronous motor is rarely used. For your application, guys, 99% of the time you're induction. But if you have a synchronous motor, make sure you go to this column. Okay? In this case, they don't make synchronous motor smaller than which size here? Size 25 almost, or, or size 30 at these voltages. Okay. But everybody knows where we got this? Everybody knows how to use it. Cool. Then minimize that boy. If it was single phase, you guys, the same thing, right? Same, same, uh, no, no gimmicks in there. All right, okay, so now we, now you guys highlighted that one. Okay, so let's go over to it. So, when you have multiple motors on one feeder, how many motors do we have of this type? Two. We have two of them. Four motors. The MEC code book guy says, okay, the first thing we need to do is to take this 20 horsepower to two. 30.250, you guys were there, under 208 voltages, to, this is T4 cable, 430.250, that's the cable that we're looking at, under voltage 208 volt, right, not the 480, and that gives give me 59.4 amps. That's the amps I'm going to be using. Okay? Now, if you have multiple motor, any question about this, guys? If you have multiple motors, here's what the code says, guys. They say the, the code tells you if you have multiple motors, you take the largest motor, multiply it by 1.25, and you add the other motors as is. One more time. If you have multiple motors, you only increase 25% on the largest, fastest, fluffiest motor. Do you have to do anything with the rest of them? Add them, enable it then. Okay? So how are you going to do that? There's two of them. Since you assume one of them is at the same size, so one of them is going to be the largest. So here's how I'll do it. I'll do the math as follows. You take the 59.4, multiply it, what's the voltage? 28, what's the, is it three phase? Yep, 1.73, don't forget that. All right. Now, I'm going to up this one, multiply this by what? 1.25, <coughs> then plus, 59.4 times 208 times 1.73. Do I have to multiply the second one by 1.25? No. And you add them up. And that will be your total. Gentlemen, it's 48. 48 KB and A. 48 KB. That's it. Does it make does it make sense? You take the one of them as still the largest. If you were a hundred of them, guys, one the largest, up by twenty five percent, add the rest ninety nine. That's easy. That's for the air handling unit. What's the difference between a chiller and a motor? The chillers are special motors, guys. They have compressors that they chill things. The, the code treats them differently. Motors typically are used for pumps, pumping the water, or, or, or uh, <laughs> blowers, blowing the air, right? Fans, blowers, uh, pumps, these are typically motors. 
um, machines that chill the water or chill the liquid, these are chillers, they're special type of motors. They're still motors, but special type of motors, they're treated differently. That's what the step before that one was, the chiller, right? Okay, we have another couple of pumps, guys. These are the hand units. We have two pumps, 10 horsepower, 283 pairs. So let's do the same thing, gentlemen. Uh, when you take the 10 horsepower, 10 horsepower, to which table? Table uh, 4, oh, yeah, 430.250, uh, same thing. Under which voltage? 28 volt. Does it make sense when I put that arrow, guys? This voltage under. This table under this voltage, and gentlemen, when you go there for this boy, you're gonna find it at 30 amp, 30.8 amp. Everybody knows how to find that one, of course. And um, and then now look at this. I have 10 horsepower and 20 horsepower. Do I need to increase these by anything? Do I need these tens? These already have been increased. All these boys will be seen out the same. So I will take two. Why two? Because there's two motors. Multiply them by 30.8, right? Times the voltage is 208, times 1.73, okay? And that will equal to 22.38. 10 horsepower? Table, this is T for table, uh, 430.250 under uh, column of 208 volt. 30.8 amps, yep. That's, that's what you get out of that table. There's no way to get one motor from the next one. Is the motors above it? Yes. 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 Good point. <laughs> All these motors, guys. All these motors are the same, they're motors. Under this step, you choose the largest out of all the 20s and all the 10s. Did you guys hear me? The largest under all the 20s and all the 10s. And you multiply the largest by 1.25, which we already did here. Do we have to pick the largest here? No, we already picked the largest at the top. Am I making sense? You take the largest of all the motors. Okay. Um, and don't forget that we all do, I always divide by a thousand. Don't show that, right? Because you guys are smart. You know how to with the key. Okay. Okay, the, the section for this one, guys, uh, for motors is for also 430.24. Uh, Anybody want to go 24? That's where it tells you 24. 430.24 tells you that you have to do what we did. Do you... Yes. Thank you. That's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go take my uh, 48 K plus my 22 K equal my total would be 70 K V A jump and highlight this and how many stars are you going to put next to this? Four stars on each side. Why? Because that's going to be current. Now, Question for Brandon. <coughs> this 70 kVA will be seen by two panels. What are they? Got it. Anybody disagree? Anybody dare to disagree? Oops. <laughs> Don't dare me, Chad. <laughs> Any comments, guys, about this? So these are the step for the motors. Almost there, guys. Last one. <coughs> Shall I, can I flip, please? Okay, let's go to the kitchen equipment. Do me a favor, please. Uh, let's go to table 220.56. 220.56. These tables you guys must highlight. 220.50, oops. You guys way ahead of me. 
Okay, 220.56. There you go. Please highlight this table. Okay. If you guys read through this article, it tell you demand factor for kitchen equipment other than dwelling. Other than dwelling. Perkins, McDonald's, uh, any kitchen equipment other than dwelling. Did you hear the word other than dwelling? It's so important because can you apply this to your house and I? And mine, other than well. Okay, how do they apply this table, gentlemen? These are number of equipment. This is your demand factor. So suppose that I have uh, five equipment, six equipment. So I changed my mind. I have six equipment. Look at that. It, it highlights the seven too. Okay, if I have six equipment, what's my derivative factor? 65. So you add the whole terms for all your equipment, kitchen equipment, and you cut them if there's six or more. By what? 65%. If there's one of them, leave it alone. Two, long time. Three, cut, cut, cut. Ten, and 90. So you guys are experts. Now let's minimize that. Okay, so, and I, I can't emphasize the importance of highlighting these tables, guys, because you have, have, I don't think you have walked through these tables before, right? Most of them, other than the mortars, probably. The mortars are the only one that we did. So, very important to highlight them, guys. Okay, so now here's all the kitchen equipment from the water heater. So, how many water heaters do I have? I have three of them. You guys remember? I have three water heaters. And uh, since I have three water heaters, name this value, multiply this by each one of those five k, and that will give me a healthy um, off. And and, um, and remember, each one of them is five k. Um, and also, you have to you have to do the three phase, guys. They are three phase, and, and the voltage is two a. Very important. And then I have also three times two k. And also three, uh, this guy's single phase, look how that screwy. This is a single phase, single phase, um, my two OAS. And I have another three uh, range, 10K. And these babies are single phase, two OAS. And the last one are also three, what was the three here? Three K, seems I like the color three. Single phase, two ways. Okay? So, add them up. I'm going to put it right here underneath them. When you add them all up, what the line add them up, you should come up with 60K. 60K DA. Right? If you guys multiply them and add them up, I did it in one step. Is it okay to add a three-phase KVA with a single-phase KVA? Yes. KVA, guys, it doesn't matter if it's single-phase or three-phase. Is it okay to add five amps single-phase and five amps three-phase? No. Amps are different. KVA is fine. KVA, you can be DC, AC, single-phase, three-phase. You can add them up, no problem. Okay, that's why we convert everything to KVA because when you're in the KVA, you don't have to worry about about the amps uh, or what the system is. Okay, demand factor. So let's go to the demand factor. Um, demand factor for for equipment. Two twenty to fifty six. The demand factor for do we have six or more? Right. Obviously, we have more than twelve equipments. And what is this? How many equipment do we have? We have twelve equipments. So now, gentlemen, multiply them by, so what do you do? You take uh, the demand factor, you take your 60, uh, multiply it, 60, oh, 60 what? Yeah, 60 KVA. You take your 60 KVA, KVA, multiply them by 0.65, and that will give me a healthy, uh, 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 a healthy 39. 39 KVA. You highlight this and you start. What 
storing it means? Okay, here's the question for all of you now. 39 kVA, where, which panel is going to be seeing that 39 kVA? Let's think about it. These are kitchen equipment. Typically, the kitchen equipment, guys, first it has to be seen by the main panel. Oh, everything. Main panel sees everything. Next, you have two options. You either put the kitchen equipment on the mechanical panel, high and light wave, or you can put it in the receptacle panel. Typically, they put the kitchen equipment on the receptacle panel. So this, but you could put them on the mechanical panel. The voltage is the same here. So typically, so this will be typically where? On the receptacle panel. But if you don't know, you really have to, if you don't know, you typically shift them into the receptacle panel. Okay. Any comments, guys? Any questions about that? Comments, questions? That's it. That's all your loads. Now, let's go, say, when you're done, let's go size the panel. Oh, man. Did you guys see that table? Talk about ugly tables. Oh, sorry, guys. Even ugly as a new box. Oh. All right, so um, this is it's a little bit. I'm gonna expand the user a little bit. See how I'm not saying I'm losing my synchronization here. After a while, the board technology has limitations. Okay, excuse my cutting, and you guys can catch up to that one. Now, here's how I did this work, guys. I put one table for you, and that's what you're going to see when you do load calculation. Let me read this to you. Do you guys remember step A? What was step A? Lighting receptacles. What was B? Lighting, what was C? Feeding cooling, O and D. O and D. Oh, by the way, there was one, uh, there was five, skip five, the five here. That five, number five, really, everybody remember what five is? Related to the load count that you guys should be doing later on. That number five, related to the load count. So that doesn't mean anything to you at this time. Okay. All right, so which color do, okay, right to the top. SP stands for service panel. Now, this symbol is phase. This symbol is neutral. Remember, we're sizing a phase and a neutral. A phase and a neutral. Uh, RP stands for receptacle panel. Phase neutral. Lighting panel, phase neutral. Mechanical panel, phase neutral. Everybody understand what you guys have at the top? You have four panels and you have two columns for each panel because we need to size what? The fins and the neutral. Now if you have 15 panels, you just keep expanding that sheet. You guys will be building this in in, uh, in Excel. I have a, a template for you. We can build the whole thing in, in Excel. Okay, so <laughs> now this is just transferring numbers, guys. Um, A was, uh, what was A? 56.9. So that number here. And the phase was 56.9, 56.9, okay? Now, these are all the phases. Now, think about it, John. 56.9 is for the phase. How about the neutral? The receptacles. Do the receptacles run on neutral? Receptacles here. Yes, all the time. General receptacle run on neutral. So the same load for the phase is moving for the neutral. 56.9. Done. Why did I put the same load for the neutral and the phases? Because the anything that need in neutral, all the receptacles need neutral. Can you run a receptacle, general purpose receptacle without neutral? No. So that same load will be seen by both of them. All right, John. Let's look at, um, this is for, let's do the service panel first. I'm looking for the service panel right here. Um, oh, actually, no, let's just do A. A for receptacle. So for receptacles, this, this will be repeating itself, 56.9 here and 56.9 here. Would, would this see anything here? Zero, zero, zero. Would the receptacle be seen under the lighting panel or mechanical panel, neutron and, and phase? No. Done. Next, lighting panel. The lighting where uh, B was lighting, what was the lighting? 44, uh, 24, uh, 24, 24, 2.5. This is 2, 4, 2.5. Now, Brandon, my friend, lights 
are running at 120. Do they need a neutral? Yes, 120. Can you get 120 with a neutral? Typically, no. You can get anything you want if you have the transformer, but typically in a building, if you see 120, you're neutral, right? So because the lighting, guys, lighting and receptacle, remember, always you see the same phase mode goes before the neutral. Because they need a neutral. Okay, so what's the number here, though? 2, 4, 2.5. Okay, would they be seen by the receptacle panel? No, how about lighting panel? 2, 4, 2.5. 2.5. How about here? Zero, zero. Are you guys following me? Lighting panel will be seen by the main, and the lighting, uh, the lighting load will be seen by the main and the lighting panel. Right? Am I making sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, everything is going to be seen. Yeah. Service panel. That's why I said SP instead of main. Because main is mechanical, confusing. S is service panel. Everything is going to be seen. Yes, sir. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. Whatever sub panel that you feed it from, it goes under. Glad that you guys got that one. That's you have understood the power distribution system. That's how power distribution ha seven happens. Everything comes to the service, and from the service, you start going feeders somewhere else. Okay. Okay. C. What was C again? C. Heating and air conditioning. Um, eighty nine. Eighty nine. Do me a favor. If you look at the heating and air conditioning, were there anything single phase? What was there? Chillers. And if you guys look at the load chillers, look at the load that I gave you. Were the chillers single phase? Three phase. Were the heaters single phase? The heaters are three phase. Is there anything under the neutral? They're all three phase. If your load is three phase, guys, only three phase, like motor is three phase and chiller three phase, do you need to, what, what would the neutral be? Zero. <coughs> the load under the neutral here would be zero. How about here? We're not going to put anything here. Zero, zero, zero. How about mechanical panel? 89. And how about the neutral? Zero. Why did I put zero for the neutral? Because the mechanical equipment that I have have no neutral. They don't need neutral. Guys, that's the advantage of three phase equipment. The advantage of three phase equipment is you can run them with three wires, not four. That's a major advantage. That's why they call them. Superior equipment, three phase equipment, superior equipment. You can run them efficiently with three wires. So, am I making sense? So, that's your. All right, so let's go to, this is step uh, uh, C, step D. What was D again? Motors. Motors. Are all my motors three phase? Yes. So, look at them. Are all my motors three phase? Oh, yeah. 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 Is there anything under the neutral then? No, thank you. So 70, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Uh, mechanical equipment, 70 and 0. The neutral will be 0. Right? Are you guys following? Do you know why I put 0 under the neutral? Even though the mechanical equipment will see the phase because there is no nothing. They're all three phase. They will not be seen by the neutral. So don't waste your time putting it under the neutral. Okay, let's so uh, let's go to E. Gentlemen, E. What was E? Kitchen, kitchen equipment. Yeah. Okay. For my kitchen equipment, I have I have thirty nine. Uh, thirty nine will be here. Okay, one of them is three phase. Is there anything? What was the voltage? Look at the voltages. Well, yeah. Two eight. Is there anything one twenty? The cell don't contribute to the neutral. They're all two eight connected between two phases. No neutral. Two phases. So ignore the neutral for this. So this for neutral will be one. Zero. And where am I going to put them? I decided to put them more. Where do you guys want to put them? Let's drop them. Receptacle or mechanical? We typically are the receptacle. And zero and zero and zero and zero and zero. 
Okay, gentlemen, total them. Now add these columns together. When you add these columns together, gentlemen, this is my slide here. When you add these columns, I, I, can, I came up with uh, four, uh, four, nine, four, um, yeah, four, four, Right? Do you see what I'm doing? Adding them all up. Gentlemen, you have just sized the whole system in KVA. You, you have just sized the whole system in KVA. Now, when you're done with sizing the KVA, by the way, this will be done in Excel for you. Right? See how step by step done in Excel? Now we need to go size the panels, the feeders, the power competition devices, and a bunch of others. How's your energy for a Friday? Are they still kicking? Yeah. <laughs> Big start. <laughs> before we go, any comments, any questions before we move away from here? Doing what? Okay, do you need a quick break? Oh. You guys want a quick break or shall we continue? Let's see or continue. Lunch break? Stand clock? Okay. All right. How about, let me tell you, how about if we go this way? We take half an hour lunch break, guys, and can you check the, um, the books and all the things downstairs? Not the books. The, we have um, a show today. The show, can you swing by and check the show so Karen will be Yeah, you want to do it. Okay, thank you.